Welcome back. In the video before the last, we had a look at the power supply architecture of an Arduino Nano Avery. And we did some experiments while basically driving that thing into a brownout and starving it of supply voltage until it stopped working and measuring several voltages here on the board. Uh, card here, link in the description. However, what we couldn't observe was a brown out reset. Now we know from previous videos where we talked about the Arduino reset controller that there is a brown out reset. Uh, cards here, links in the description. However, the 80 Mega 4809 on our Nano Avery obviously doesn't issue a brown out reset. And that's probably caused by uh, the configuration of the brown out detector of that Mega AVR Series 0 chip by the Arduino environment. So in this video, we will have a closer look at that brown out detector of the 80 Mega 4809. And we will determine why exactly it doesn't issue a brown out reset and what we might be able to do about it. Enjoy! As always, we start by having a look at the Mega AVR Zero Series datasheet. And there, right in the overview, it states the BOD, Brownout Detector, is mainly controlled by fuses. Uh, that's bad because in the standard Arduino environment we cannot program the fuses. The brownout detector is controlled by a total of six registers, but if you have a closer look at that, there are only a few bits, respectively bit groups here that control the whole thing. So it's not a full six bytes that we have to learn about. And in this video, I think we will just uh, concentrate on the control A and control B register and try to read those out. Let's start with the control A register. And there we have uh, one bit here for the sample frequency and then uh, two bits for active and two bits for sleep. And that's the mode when the CPU is actively running and that's the mode of the brownout detector if the CPU is in sleep mode. However, uh, again, uh, loaded from fuse and these first three bits here, 4 to 2, so the sample frequency and what the brownout detector does when the CPU is in active mode are read only. We can only influence uh, the brownout detector in the sleep mode without changing the fuses. So we have that single sample frequency bit here, which is either set to zero, that means a sample frequency of one kilohertz or one sample frequency of 125 kilohertz. Please note that there's also a continuous mode, okay? So the input voltage or supply voltage is monitored continuously and not just 1000 times per second or 125,000 times per second. If you actually use the sample frequency or do a continuous measurement of the supply voltage in the CPU being active mode is defined by the two active bits here, which can be 00, zero disabled, 0, 01 enabled, meaning continuously monitoring of the supply voltage, and then 10 sampled, yeah, using the sampling frequency, and then 11 enable with wake up halted until brownout detector is ready. That is, if you are in sleep mode and everything is off, the CPU only comes back into active mode when the blackout detector, brown, sorry, brownout detector is already up and running. 
Finally, we have the same two bits for the sleep mode, uh, but with the same combinations, but for one one, which is reserved because we are in sleep mode. So this really determines if the brownout detector is running in sleep mode and also sucking some current, of course. The control B register, which is also loaded from a fuse and is also read only, contains just a three bit field uh, brownout detection level. And that can be set either to 1.8 volts, 2.6 volts, or 4.3 volts. If you run your Arduino at 5 volts, um, yeah, your Arduino Nano Every, at least the AT Mega 4809 runs at 5 volts, you would usually choose the 4.3 volts at your, as your brownout detection level, where you would stop working and wait until the supply voltage recovered above a value of 4.3 volt and then issue a reset, a brownout reset. Let's get over the sketch I've written to read out that control A and control B register of the brownout detector. Uh, we need that include here the AVR IO.H because there all the definitions for the mega AVR registers and bits are included. Uh, the rest is old code from the uh, previous video about the power architecture and the videos before, so we can just ignore that. Uh, within the setup, I just initialize my serial interface on USB and then I call print brownout detector config. Uh, the loop is empty. Uh, do nothing else but print out the brownout detector config. And then we come to the function, <laughs> the core print out brownout detector config. Lots of brownout detector configs here. Huh? And that is defined, all these micros are defined, which I listed here in the uh, IOM 4809.h for the 80 mega 4809. Uh, which is included via the io.h. I already discussed how this include stuff works in the first video about, or in the video about the watchdog timer or card here, link in the description. Anyway, uh, the Windows path on a Windows installation uh, to these files is here. So, we have the BOD, Brownout Detector. I will now only use BOD, which is a struct that contains one byte for the control A register. And we also have a define for a bit mask to identify our sample frequency bit. And we have an enum for the sample frequency, only zero or one at that bit position for a sample frequency of one kilohertz or 125 hertz. I think I misspoke when we read the data sheet and said 125 kilohertz. Nah. Okay, so it's either one kilohertz or 125 hertz. Then we have a bit mask for a bit group for the operation in active mode and an associated enum for the four modes. So disabled, enabled, sampled, or on wake up. Yeah, uh, it wake up is halted until the BOD is ready. We talked about that. And then we have the next uh, bit mask here for the three bits for the sleep mode and yeah. Uh, the same enum, but only three options. So the uh, EN wake option is missing, of course, when we are in sleep mode. The struct also contains a control B byte and a bit mask for the three, two bits within that 
byte and uh, enum yeah, for the three voltage levels at which our brownout detector can work. So uh, 1.8 volts, 2.6 volts or 4.2 volts. I already documented here the uh, struct members for the remaining four bytes and the bit masks and the enums, but we won't use those in this video. Uh, please note, I didn't list here each and every define for the brownout detector. Uh, there are also bit position macros and stuff, uh, which you usually don't need. It just takes up space here in the command. And then finally we do something and uh, it's trivial. We just print out the contents of our control A and control B register in a nice manner. Yeah, giving here a nice heading line and then printing out the content of the different bits and bit fields using those macros and those enums. That's it. We are already here at the control B, which only contains the level. And yeah, that's it. That's the whole function. And here's the output on the serial monitor. So our BOD control A register, uh, the BOD sample frequency is set to one kilohertz. We cannot change that, but for yeah, changing the fuse and please note that's a zero, okay? Uh, BOD in CPU active mode is disabled. That's three zeros. And BOD in sleep mode is also disabled. Again, three zeros. So it seems the whole control A register is just filled with zeros. Control B, the Brownout detection level, is set to 1.8 volts, which is a completely, yeah, for five volt operation of your 80 mega uh, nonsense. But that's because that's also zero. So basically the Arduino environment initializes via fuses, the control A and control B registers all to zeros. Yeah. And we're back in the data sheet. And yes, I misspoke. Uh, the sample frequency is either one kilohertz or 125 hertz. Anyway, the important thing here is that the sample frequency bit is stored in the fuse BOD config, as is the active bits, as are the sleep bits. And the level bits in the control B registers are also in the fuse BOD CFG. So the whole brownout detector configuration is neatly stored in a fuse at the offset one zero. So we have everything from the level, the CP, a sample frequency, active mode, mode, active mode, mode, uh, CPU and sleep mode, mode. Everything is here in the eight bits. The, the question is, how can we write that fuse in an Arduino environment? The fuses can only be written over the UPDI interface. Yeah, I went over that picture. I think in the one of the reset videos already uh, carded link or links in the description. So uh, the UPDI interface of our 80 mega 4809 talks to the SAM D11 on our Arduino Nano Every, which runs the bootloader and talks via USB to our PC. So I never saw an option for fuses uh, anywhere in the Arduino Nano programming environment. And uh, yeah. 
the best advice on how to actually burn these fuses in the Arduino environment I found in the Arduino forum under the thread how to set bot fuse. I will put a link to that thread uh, into the description of the video. So what that guy here, WestFW, uh, is basically suggest suggesting is we just call AVR dude uh, with the correct package option for the Arduino environment and with the pattern for our 80 mega 4809 and that's basically our programmer we're using the onboard programmer on our arduino nano every in the samd 11 uh, with the right port that should be our usb port and the right baud rate and then we can he says uh, use this command uh, you fuse one one should be yeah the BOD fuse uh, right and then the value we write to it and that works because or should work <laughs> because uh, allegedly the Arduino IDE sets some fuses but not the BOD fuse. So you can write the BOD fuse one maybe with that statement. Um, to be honest I don't want to try that out right now because writing those fuses you can mess up your Arduino Nano every and uh, I don't have a spare right now for experimentation and I'm not that hot on using the brown out detector but maybe just maybe there will be a future video about that and that's it for today uh, not very long and even less satisfying video uh, but we identified the problem and maybe if the weather <laughs> gets a little bit uh, yeah uh, less hot again i already have now it's about uh, noon uh, over 30 degrees celsius here in my lair I might revisit that and try to present you with a verified working version for burning that BOD fuse on an Arduino Nano Every. Till then, bye.